Thomas Silva. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Drop it in. So easily superior to that of any of her competitors. Our next guest on Brando's World of X Games, an absolute X Games legend, owner of eight X Games medals. She is synonymous with success as far as aggressive inline is concerned at X Games. She is Fabiola De Silva. Fabiola, thanks so Hi much guys. for joining the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time. I know. And we're going to get to that. There's a lot I want to get to with you, but. Before we get into any of that, I have one question for you. All right. Have you worked out today? Yes. Every morning, uh, 6 30 a.m. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm asking and joking. If you don't follow Fabiola da Silva on Instagram, I highly suggest <laughs> yeah. it for multiple reasons for, for great flashback clips, for clips in the streets, rollerblading. Um, but we're in quarantine right now. So yes, none of us are right. able to go to the gym. All I need mm -hmm. to do is get on your Instagram and I've got my workout of the day um, because it's you're true. doing so much, so much circuit <laughs> CrossFit training. It's amazing. When did you get into that world? Man, I started to do CrossFit like uh, five years ago because mm -hmm. I was so sick of going to the gym and spend hours on a treadmill and, uh, and all the machines, you know, so I wanted to try to find something that motivated me to to do other things in a gym, but to stay active. So a friend of mine took me to the CrossFit gym. Man, the first week, the first, the first round that I did, the first day when I was there, all my joints, like I didn't have too much mobility because for skating, I mean, your wrists, you know, and, sure. and like your shoulders, you know, I used to all the, the movements. So I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so athletic and I cannot do it. Everything is hurting. <laughs> but then um, I did another t a few weeks and then everything is starting to, you know, get good. And I never stopped. I feel like it's something new that because you do gymnastics, you like flip things and you do a lot of like running and and you can use your whole body. You know, it's very it's very inspirational. CrossFit. It's hard. I mean, I'm not going to say it's easy. I'm not super good or anything. I just love training hard. So but have you, com really have you competed, Fabiola, in, in like CrossFit games or like tournaments and stuff? Uh, not CrossFit games, but um, I did all the open, the yeah 20.1. And uh, I hurt my shoulder even doing that because I did a few events here in Brazil. And I did two contests in a row, and then I did the 2.1. Man, that was, like, enough for my body. Because yeah. I already come from a sport that um, I have, like, a little knee problem. It's Plus, it's aging, too. I mean, your joints, and I have a little, like, ligament stuff on my right knee. In CrossFit, you do a lot of uh, repetitive movements, so that doesn't help that much. And uh, plus all the 28 years of skating, but I'm still doing it. I just try to um, feel my body, you know, and if it's hurting too much, I just do like different things that doesn't hurt me too much. I think, it's amazing. More. I think it's amazing too, when it comes to like group training or circuit training like that, especially mm -hmm. from a, a professional athlete standpoint, because you're so used to having a competitive mindset with yes. anything you do, whether you're in an actual contest or you're practicing a trick, um, you know, the moments leading into that event. And I just think th the mental warfare that you've gone through your entire career kind of probably bodes itself well because it is such a competitive environment. It's true. Yeah, it helped a lot. Like my first ever tournament, I'm so like, you know, skating and, you know, all the extreme sports is very active. It's very like, like rushing. So right. I didn't have like the, not the ability I had, but I didn't have the mentality or I didn't compete at CrossFit that you have all the, how can I say when we skate, we already know our lines, you know, like what do you have to do? Like if you miss, how can right. you compensate that? 
So I didn't have that on CrossFit. So I was always trying to do everything fast. And, uh, and sometimes if you have like those long wads, you cannot start like hundred percent up, you know, cause unless you're not going to finish. So I had to get more experience doing the, the training sessions, <laughs> Right, but it's <laughs> great. Funny. I mean, I'm very competitive. That's for sure. Like when I started doing it, I was already like wanted to compete. I was like, if I get a little better, I want to start competing amateur, you know, my dream, to be honest, like, I was like, man, imagine if I could be at the CrossFit games, but dude, those athletes, I mean, I follow all of them. They trained for so many years, you know, it's like me skating. Well, you, you, so how you can took I, the words out of my mouth? I, I feel like you're on your way to doing that. And I, I think that would be truly remarkable. I mean, that, I have such an appreciation. <laughs> I love that this interview is just turning into a, a CrossFit interview. I wasn't planning on that, but I could just, I can see well, it like this, this like our, next chapter yeah. for you. I love the training. Trust me. Like I just turned 41 and I'm not ashamed to say my age because um, I think we should motivate other women to, you know, to stay active, not only women, but how important it is to stay active and practice sports doesn't matter if it's like rollerblading or skateboarding, BMX, whatever you want to do, you know, running or whatever. And uh, through all these years, I think I just feel so good now because of that, because I learned how to stay active, how to eat right and just exercise, you know. And if I don't exercise, man, I cannot see myself not exercising or doing anything active. It's impossible for me. Like, even I feel sad if I don't do it. It makes me sick, you know? I think wow. athletes are like that. But I just like to stay healthy, you know? It's my lifestyle. It's part of who I became, I guess. But uh, uh, that would be a huge dream for me. But I feel I it coming. I, have, like, I truly coming. With knowing nothing about that world, I feel like you're on your way. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know I will be like masters, right? Oh, but it's not no. Good. It's still, yeah. it's still the games. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't care if I, that's what I tell my friends. I'm like, dude, I have a few friends that they made it like, but they are like twenties and, uh, you know how sometimes people talk shit. They're like, Oh, and talk shit about the guy. I was like, dude, he made it. Doesn't matter. What Even does it matter? If I just yeah. to step on the field. He had yeah. to go through so many steps to get there. I mean, I don't care. You can say anything you like. If I'm there, I'm there, you know? Dude, it's the same like with X Games. Obviously, it's you won true. seven gold medals, but if you never yeah. got on a podium, it's like, you made it. You were there. Yeah. So you had to go all through the phases to be the best in your country, you know, the whole country. So yeah. I don't care. <laughs> um, okay, I want to get into everything with you, but... There's a new game that we started playing with each guest, and it's called the Hot Box. How fast can you answer 20 questions rapid fire? Are you in? Oh, God. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm setting I'm my ready. timer right now. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Favorite cheat meal? Pizza. First CD you ever bought? ACDC. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Front squat or overhead squat? Overhead squat. What event should be brought back to the X Games? Rollerblading. <laughs> Favorite movie? Favorite movie? Favorite movie? Uh, Miracle in the Cell 7. What's harder, working out or skating? Both. Discipline. Do you have any tattoos? And if so, how many? I have eight tattoos. Spirit animal. Eagle. If you were a superhero, who would you be? Wonder Woman. <laughs> Favorite holiday. Favorite holiday? I think um, Christmas because Ho we get to see the whole family. Oh, I love that. Hollow rock or hollow rock hold? Hollow rock. Bacon or turkey bacon? Turkey bacon. Vert or street or park? Vert. 
Who would play you in a movie about your life? Man, I think that Tomb Raider girl. Oh, uh, shoot, I don't know the, her name. But... Oh, shoot, I forgot. The Angelina Jolie played Angelina that Jolie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I got it. You did our 20 questions, a minute 44.24. Oh, my English is all right then. I was like, man, what if I get stuck? <laughs> We're going to, we'll let you know at the end of the year where you stack up, but that's got you on the podium right now. I promise nice. you that, Fabiola. Okay. Well, thanks for playing with us. Um, you mentioned just moments ago before we got into Hotbox uh, that you recently turned for. I want you to take me back to being 17 years old in 1996 right. at your first X Games. How did you get invited? What do you remember that moment? What was that like? Man, I was skating here in Brazil and I never left the country ever. And uh, we skated a skate park by my house. It's called Roller Brothers. And mm -hmm. back in the day, Chris Edwards and Arlo Eisenberg, they were the champions for the 1995 X Games. So this skate park in Brazil was like, a, they had a party for the one year opening. And uh, they brought the X Games champions here to uh, do a demo at the park. Man, I used to watch those guys on the VHS tapes, you know, and all that. And uh, I did a little demo with them and I didn't speak English or anything. And I was just this young girl like skating like crazy <laughs> and just wanted to show my tricks, you know. And I didn't have a cell phone or email back in the day. Um, only my mom had a phone, but um, I just exchanged like addresses by hand, like mailing address. And after like six months, I got a letter from the X Games inviting me to go to America. Wow. But then I was like, man, my mom, my family didn't have money for me to travel or anything like that, you know? So I had a small sponsor in Brazil that um, was helping me. So I brought my, uh, my letter to this uh, Chinese guy. And uh, he told me to, he was gonna think about it and he told me to come back in three days. So imagine in those three days, I was like, no sleep. Whoa. Like I was just like a young girl excited to go skate, you know? So after that, he said yes and i got really excited like they were like that's why i tell them every time i do my interviews or anything that i do i'm so thankful for that brand that tracks art is called tracks art because if it wasn't for him i wasn't even gonna be able to go you know or i don't know achieve, i've achieved so many things that that i did it was because of him he first his first go you know so and after that, I went to America. I participated in three events before the X Games so I could do a little warm up. And uh, I started to win everything, even those three events and then the X Games. And then in the same year that I won the X Games, I got invited, I got a, um, a sponsorship from Rollerblade, which is Rollerblade mm -hmm. is one of the, the biggest, yeah. yeah, the biggest skating brands. And after that, I couldn't believe it. I was getting paid and everything. I was like, oh, my God. But everything happened so fast that I was really in shock. I was just like a girl that liked to skate, you know. And it's pretty funny because Leticia Buffoni is like my friend. Man, I see her. I see me like a long time ago, you know. But, of course, skateboarding is huge, huge. And now we have Instagram and all this media but it's so awesome to see her doing so well you know because kind of uh, like reminds me of me i was actually going to bring up leticia a little later because I, it's it's amazing that you brought up that parallel because we see it as well to see a girl yeah. who started out as a young teenager in skateboarding and you weren't even sure obviously uh, on the brazilian guy side we had seen over the last 10 plus years just how successful uh skateboarding whether it's burt park and of course street but to see mm -hmm. leticia boney boney taking that charge and then becoming truly the face of women's street skateboarding i i saw the same thing when i think back to like your career with women's rollerblading 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. And sometimes we talk, like I haven't talked to her for a little while because she's always, she's really busy now. But, um, I remember a few times when we talked, I was like, Hey, everything that I, that I did, like that I could tell her like some tips or, you know, things to invest and things, because I went through that already. And when you're so young, you get so excited and you make all this money at a young age. It's crazy, you know? So we talk about a lot of things and it really makes me happy to see her doing so well. You know, I mean, she deserves everything that she has. She's good. She's very motivating girl. She's pretty. She's feminine. She, she got it all, you know? How did <laughs> what you, can I say? You, you brought up, you brought up, you know, uh, money, fame, success of events that, that can kind of happen very, very quickly. Yes, um, especially for someone like yourself, where it happened instantly from the moment you really stepped foot on U.S. soil to compete in events. You won right away. You won your very first X Games. Mm -hmm. um, to, to get into that position as a teenager, 17, 18, 19, did you have someone in your corner or people kind of helping sort of advise you if when money starts coming in, sponsorships start coming in? Like, how did you negotiate these things and sort of ride that wave man that's that's what i said when we were talking like you can really lose yourself if you don't have like a, a good mentality you know like i was always humble no matter what no matter if i made a million or if i made it like a dollar mm -hmm. you know i think it's really important because that's what i tell all the kids that i teach teach or Everyone that doesn't matter if you're good at what you do. Okay, you can be really good, but if you, but if you are like a, a shitty person, doesn't matter, you know. Right. I mean, I don't think it's. I think it's a combination um, of a lot of things, you know. And uh, I had a guy that helped me because I didn't speak English. So the team manager from Rollerblade, he used to give me a lot of devices and everything. And I had a guy in Brazil that helped me a lot too. But then way further down the line with all the X games and all that money coming in, I got a financial advisor that the, the team rollerblader, the manager guy um, introduced me. So that was the best thing I ever done because I think if it wasn't for his advices, I wouldn't, you just spend money, you know? I, You're so I, and young, I think you don't know what to do. At that age, I would have lost all my money if I was doing that at like 25. I can't imagine being like 17, 18 with like deals coming your way like that. Man, it's crazy. Like, I'm so happy that I had him. So happy, you know. And I think it's important if you have someone to guide you so you know what to do with your money, you know. So how did you get growing up in Brazil uh, rollerblading? Like, how did you gravitate toward that what, was that something that you had done from an early age? Did you skate as well? Like what got you into inline? What was the first thing you remember? Was it a person or event, a contest? Just what was it? Well, I used to roll on a skateboard, uh, on a skateboard for real, um, at a park by my house. But I was never like that good. I used to, I broke my foot dropping in on a mini ramp, you know, and uh but after that, I kept like skateboarding a little bit. But then, and in the same skate park, um, some people used to rent out at night, like every Monday, they used to rent out for uh, roller skating. And I was like, wow. And one day I was leaving and I saw those people coming in with roller blades, roller skates, not even inline skates, roller skates. Actual skates. Wow. Back in the day, yeah. So I thought that was cool. And I saw all those guys doing tricks. I was like, oh my God, I never saw that, you know? So I asked my dad for a pair of roller skates. <laughs> and uh, so after like two weeks, I got a pair of roller skates and uh, I went to this park. Man, I loved it. How old, how old were you? How old were you when you got your roller skates? 14. Wow. So I was just And at that like point, you had never been on roller blades yet at 14. No, I started I start learning on my backyard here in my house. And then after that, I skated a, a little bit on a flat ground just to know how to skate. And then I already went to the park. Wow. Like small mini ramps, bowls, um, little transitions. And then uh, I connected with a friend of mine. Today, he's like one of my best friends. He doesn't even skate anymore. 
and um, he was teaching me everything. Everything that I knew in the beginning, he's the one that taught me. And the other day, he went to the park with me before the this craziness. Man, he felt just dropping in. I felt so bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, you know, I, when me- you, if you don't practice, it's like, Oh, I know. It doesn't, you got to put in the work. That's, that's amazing to me though, Fabiola, that you got your first pair of not rollerblades, but roller skates. Yeah. My, can you believe my first, when I first drop in on a vert ramp was on roller skates. I so that, wish I had that, that tape. <laughs> that scares the hell out of me. And then within three years, you're winning inline vert at X yes. Games. Like that's, <laughs> that, that is the craziest like Cinderella story I've ever heard in any sport. Like who picks something up that quick and becomes the very best at it. That's unbelievable. Man, it's sometimes like I think about it, everything that I have done, you know, but I'm very intense in everything that I, if I want to do something like I always, I'm not competitive with others. Of course, if I'm doing like a contest or something, but I'm very competitive with myself and it's good in a way because you get good at it, but sometimes it's not good. When it's too much, you know, you kind of like, uh, I'm always pushing myself too much sometimes. But I think in the same time it's good because I get good at whatever I want to do, you know. I put a motivation, I put work into it, and, you know, I think it's just my, it's just my mindset is like that. And now that I'm older, I learn how to like uh, step back a little, you know, because even if I work out every day, my body responds good, but doesn't recover that good anymore. Mm-hmm. So, and I have a friend, uh, I made a, a friend at a, through the CrossFit and he's master, man, he's better than the younger kids. He's always tells me that he's like, Fab, the less is better. Then, because I used to do all the training for like three, four hours, like, you know, when you do all the, um, you follow like a competition training with mm-hmm. A, B, C, D, E. The first, the first year I was like, oh my God, it's like three hours working out. And then uh, now that my shoulder is kind of like, eh, my knee, he's like, fab, the last is better. He's right. It's like skating now for me. Like if I go to the skate park. Man, sometimes, okay, I skate for three hours, but not all the time like before. One hour for me, two hours is enough, you know? Right. I know. That's why young legs, it's like it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evolution, right? When you have young, fresh legs, you can skate for five, six hours and not get tired. Yeah. And you have no other commitment. So that's all you can do. And then all of a sudden, 10 years later, your body just doesn't respond that way anymore. So you got to start training smarter not harder Different, so yeah obviously that's what you've been doing i am curious though you talk about like this fierce competitive mindset you got you found success so early in your career and like achieved it consistently you became sort of the poster child for your sport and you became so good so early that you became the target was that a comfortable place for you to be feeling like the rest of the girls were kind of chasing after you Man, it's when I think about that, I think I was so into skating that um, I never felt like I felt pressure because, you know, when you start winning, especially all the X games, like you're always the favorite. So you kind of like, oh, my God, I have to win. You know, it's a lot of pressure on you because all the cameras are on you. All the sponsors are waiting for you to win, you know, so you kind of like have to make yourself win like. And it's hard for you to realize that you have to win all the time, but sometimes it doesn't happen all the time. And, uh, but man, it was crazy. Like even because I never thought that skating would, was going to take me that far. You know, I start skating as a teenager here in Brazil, just for fun. And I never thought that I could make a career skating. And next thing I knew, I was like, oh, my gosh, I won the X Games. And then I won another time. And then I start traveling the world doing, like, the best thing that I chose to do. So I don't know. It's just weird. At one point, I felt pressure, a lot of pressure. But I was good with that, too. 
I mean, yeah, I think that's I think that's part of it. The psychological. It's uh, very mental, being, you know. Being of like, as you said, I, I think Nigel Houston is a perfect example in, in skateboarding that he is favored to win every time he drops into a contest. And he seems to revel in that. He seems to like the spotlight and feeling he's the one that's got to win this thing. And he's got the target on his back. And I just wonder, once you achieve that certain level of success, certain athletes kind of enjoy that challenge and, and brings out the best of them. And then we see some who are so incredibly gifted or talented, but don't seem to rise to the occasion in a contest because I don't want to say they're not prepared, but maybe that's just not in their DNA to compete yeah. on the stage like that. I think a lot of people, because contest is very mental. It's right. very, it's like you said, some people I saw, I seen so many athletes that on practicing is incredible good and you, it's amazing. But then when it comes to three to one, they get really nervous, you know, like they kind of like, they shock themselves, but it's very, it's very mental. It's very, that's what I think, like, for you to succeed well in competitions, you have to work your mind. It's not only do good at whatever you do, you have to work your, I think, a spiritual uh, mind and your body, you know? For me, those three things, they walk together for mm. you to, because... I think you have to have your life on point. Like um, you have to have, how do I say on point is like, uh, you have to balance. You have right. to find your balance, you know, that you feel good. Because if you feel good, that contest is going to pressure you, but it's not going to kill you, you know? Right. So, yeah. and after I got older, like for me, when I, when I compete, I don't watch anybody. Why? Mm. Because that causes me anxiety, causes me like worry, causes me, I get nervous because I see people doing crazy tricks. I'm, and what if I do a trick that I don't do? It's going to, it's going to make my mind crazy and I'm not going to trust myself. So I never watch anybody skating before I go, you know, I never do. Even when I'm at CrossFit, I don't, I don't see any performance or anything. Ah, that's wild. Uh, yeah. Take me back. Take me back to the last year you competed at X Games in 2004. And for maybe some of the fans out there that don't realize, obviously, aggressive inline is no longer at X Games, but there was no women's division that year right. at X Games. So you were competing against the guys. What was yes. that like? I, I don't know if you had competed in other uh, male events prior to that but obviously at x games it doesn't get any bigger than that i mean did you i mean was that always going to be the thinking oh well they took my contest away so now i'm going to compete with the guys what was that conversation like getting to participate in that in that event well before that i was competing with the guys already because in our we have asa was the the guys that uh coordinated uh inline skating so in their events, we already, mm -hmm. I was competing with the guys already because there was no, not that many girls anymore on vert. So for right. television, let's talk about business. I mean, only three girls for a, a big event doesn't look good, you know, for the TV. So they decided to launch the women against guys. Um, they thought they were going to motivate women, but a lot of girls, they thought that was a crazy idea. But for me, since I... I skated always with the guys in Brazil because it was never like many women on the vert ramps. So for me, it was a challenge. I like challenges. I was yeah. like, wow, if I see the Yasutokos or Marco or all these guys doing these crazy tricks, why not me? And I wanted to challenge myself. I was like, okay, if I go to a contest and I'll make top 10 every contest, I'm happy. So that my goal was just to be in the finals, not even to win or, you know, I never won, but I got second. Wow. I mean, and then I learned the double backflip at the X Games. That's when mm -hmm. I landed that too, so low. <laughs> I still, I, Fab, Fabiola, I still like, there are some gnarly tricks across all disciplines, whether you're talking rollerblading or skateboarding yeah. or freestyle motocross, BMX, snowboarding, skiing. Um, a double backflip on rollerblades 
is to me the heaviest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and watching that, watching that run and YouTube it, go check it out uh, the, of her uh, run at the X Games when you land that double backflip. I mean, high Man. risk, high reward, but that is that is such an amazing trick. It is, and the first time I saw a guy doing it, we were at some contest in Europe, a tour, and I was like, oh my God. I was like, I'm never gonna do that trick, it's out of question. And then one time I was like at Woodward for the summer, uh, Woodward West, and my friend Marco DeSanti is one of the best rollerbladers too in the world. He was at camp, he's like, Fab, we were skating the vert just for fun. He's like, Fab, why don't you try a double into the foam pit? And I was like, oh my God, no, no, no. And then he convinced me. So the first one that I tried, it's foam. I was like, oh, it's just foam. So I rotated right. He's like, man, you got it, you got it. And then I start training with him. I trained for like a month or more. We used to drive there every weekend just for me to train the double backflip. And then when I got this spin really good on a foam pit, I went to the resi. Oh my God, I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> foam pit is one thing, resi is another thing. And then the real thing is like a totally different level, like mm -hmm. because your confidence is different, you know? But um, I learned the double backflip, but I didn't land one on a, a Woodward at the ramp. I only landed at the resi. I landed my first flip in France, my first ever double backflip on the ramp in the middle of my run. I was like, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, was And there then after that, I start doing it. But I, that's what I was going to ask. When, when's the best in your perfect run? When is the best place to drop that double back? Like in the middle of it, right out the gate as a closer or just you know, when's the best time to throw that trick? Okay, for me, since my double backflip wasn't very good, because all the guys that does really well, it's very like gymnastic looking mm -hmm. backflip. You have to tuck in, in a ball so you can uh, take off in the right spot and land right under the coping. Mine, oh my God. I used to land like really low because I never, like my backflip was always like not my best trick. So the double... Mm -hmm. You know, double is two, the, two flips. And uh, I used to land a little low. So I used to put that trick almost at the end of my run. You know? But then you have to work yourself. You have to have legs. You have to have, you know, you have to have your cardio going. Because if you don't have amplitude, how are you going to throw like a trick that you're going to spin twice, you know? And it was so scary. Oh, my God. Like... For me, that trick, every time I used to do that, was like, I would say a prayer. Like, I was always, like, scared. I'm not going to lie. It's not a trick that uh, I felt really comfortable on it. That's for sure not. You talked about growing up uh, as a young girl in Brazil, not ever thinking that you would become a professional inliner or that this would be a career that would, like, catapult you, you know, to being in the States and making money and sponsorships. At what point did you ever think about when it was going, like, this is amazing, but like, is this, can this last forever? Were you ever sort of looking over your shoulder at like, how long can I do this for? Or is there a next chapter for me? Man, I used to be so busy that I didn't have time. Like, you know, when you're on top of the game, like you're doing so much and then not only competing, but you're doing like demos and then you're doing right. filming for movies and all this crazy great thing is happening in your life like so quick that I really didn't have time to think about like the future. I was always living at the moment, you know. That's why sometimes these days I'm like, oh my God, if I had the mentality that I have today way back, we all say that, but um I think I could do like a little better, but in the same time, I thought of that maybe like four years ago that I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like how many years still am I going to do that? As I got older, I was stressing at one point of my career. I was like, is this over for me? I mean, am I going to skate today? I don't make money skating. I mean, it's not my major like before 
I do a lot of mm-hmm. demos and uh, speeches here and there. And I, I just got back from before this uh, craziness. I was in Amsterdam for a contest, but um, I still make money skating, but it's not my, it's not a hundred percent comes from only skating, you know? Mm. Yeah, so, I was just, uh, and, there, and part of the reason I ask is obviously, as you know, you know, as you mentioned previously, the business side of things, you know, there, there's a lot that goes into, I think sometimes fans don't realize that because they're like, oh, bring this back, or why don't you do this or that? And you just realize that there are yeah. so many levels to what, you know, constitutes one, getting at, at an event, the, the size of vaccines, and two, like what gets on TV, and that's a whole mm-hmm. other conversation. But I was yeah. just curious. At, you know, at what point when X Games basically announced it wasn't bringing back aggressive inline, you know, what was your immediate reaction or feeling? Did that seemingly come out of nowhere or did you have a feeling that, you know, you guys might always be on the precipice of getting cut out or did it just take you by surprise? I think took all of us by surprise, to be honest, because we we all thought that rollerblading was great you know and uh and everyone asked me these questions even today uh why did they why they cut off uh inline skin i was like guys listen it's business it's let's talk like adult it's business it's like uh, having a a job that you know the world the world is like spinning different so I don't have the control of like what they wanted to see, what the TV likes, what the stands are for that. And, you know, I'm sad. I always say I'm sad that we are not there, but we, we were not the only ones that got cut it right after inline and then wakeboarding, wakeboarding is sick. Like I love that sport. And I was like, why this, why that? But it's hard for me to explain to people because it's everyone X games is a business. Let's say that it is a business, you know, and it's not only about athletes, it's uh, companies that are running behind that. So I totally understand. But I was so, I love, I love the rollerblade so much that we had other events that I was like, well, I don't care. I'm still going to skate. But I was very upset for sure. I was yeah. really sad because X Games was fun. Man, the biggest, it's like a Olympics for you know, for the extreme sports and we, the whole industry got really upset. But in the same time, after that, we had a, like a great event too, through the ASA. We had the LG action sports tour that right. was going on for like a two to three years. And then I was doing a lot of shows for Matt Hoffman. And, you know, it's just, I always think like this, like some doors, they might close, but better ones are going to open up in a way i say better ones because i'm very positive you know yeah. i was like well if i don't have the x games that sucks you know but i still i look i look through the other things that i had right instead of being all like negative i was like well you know let's move on what your can glass I do? your your glass half full fabiola i like that <laughs> Uh, you mentioned you mentioned Matt Hoffman. Obviously, he is a legend in his own right. I know you've got a, a special relationship with him that dates back years and years. You guys have known yeah. each other so long. What what uh, what's it like just working with and and knowing and being friends with Matt Hoffman? Man, Matt is amazing to me now as a friend. And um, man, one day like that day when the X Games, the last year, that two thousand four, right, man when he came on top of the ramp to to cheer for the rollerbladers you know to be there for us that thing that act that he did was amazing to me because he was there to prove that doesn't matter you know he appreciates any sport doesn't matter what you do and that made me like even more mad you know because he has no he doesn't make exceptions he doesn't he doesn't care if he likes it, he likes it, you know? And then I did so many shows for Matt that he's amazing. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to do a show for Matt Hoffman, you know? And that guy, every time I got hurt in my career, I look up to him because he's older than me. And I was like, my gosh, that guy broke so many bones. If he's doing it, yeah. I'm going to be fine, you know? And he just inspired me in my whole career. And then 
when I, he autographed his own book. He has a book. Remember mm -hmm. his book? Yeah. So he autographed his book for me and I even cried whatever he, he wrote there. I don't remember. I have the book here in my house, but, um, it's just special to be recognized by all these legends, you know? So that made me think that I'm on the right path, that I'm doing good, a good thing. Oh, so no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. No, the camaraderie, the camaraderie is extraordinary at X Games. And it's cool to see all these different sports come together. And, you know, you watch like uh, skateboarders come out to watch, you know, yeah. freestyle or motocross best trick because they all it's like we're all here together and like we want to take in the yeah, show as you said it's, it's the watch, best on the planet uh, i used to love to watch dirt too the bmx dirt oh bmx dirt so fun man so fun my goodness Craziness. so while we're on while we're on the topic of x games obviously you've got eight x games medals seven gold um winning your very first year but uh 2020 is 25 years of x games we're celebrating when you look back at 25 years of X Games, is there any particular memory for you or contest or event from, from X Games yesteryear that, that stands out above the rest? Man, I even, as I said, I got real, I get emotional when I talk about that because, man, people see us on TV and on Instagram and sometimes people, they just think everything is flowers, you know? And behind the scenes is very hard like people they always like oh you guys are having fun traveling and just like doing what you love but behind that is a lot of like you have to choose a lot of different things you have to train you have to travel you have to be on point you have to i always told myself if i want to really be the best rollerblader i cannot party i cannot drink i have to stay on it you know i was very like a hundred percent on it. So I had to make sacrifice to be who I became. And in anything that we do, you have to sacrifice yourself at one to another. And it's just, it's amazing. Like I cannot believe everything that I've done. I mean, I believe it because I did it. But <laughs> now that I, I went to this contest in uh, Amsterdam, I cried because I felt like I was in X Games there. All these mm. people around me, like telling me that I still motivate them and I'm 41. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, that's why I never want to stop. I mean, X Games, I'm very thankful for this event because brought me a lot of things. It's just since the X Games started, I became fab, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about fame on everything, but I know that helps. I'm not going to lie, but just made my career huge, you know, and I guess I was in the right place in the right time. And no, if you guys but... still had rollerblading, I'm sure I was going to be there. <laughs> uh, you know what? You bring up, you bring up a good question. Obviously we, without having a graphic inline at X teams, um, you know, I certainly am not following it as much. So I, uh, apolog I apologize if this sounds a little ignorant, but I'm sure there are a lot of fans who are fans of yours or, maybe rollerbladed once growing up or don't do it anymore. But I, I am curious, what is the state of rollerblading right now in 2020? Like what, what is it, what's the climate like for the sport at the moment? Are there contests? Are there yes. is it more about filming? Like what, what is rollerblading in 2020 look like? Well, like I said, I went to Amsterdam for the biggest rollerblading event in the world. It's called the Winter Clash. Mm -hmm. And it's in Holland. Oh, my God. Like, I went there 10 years ago. So 10 years back, they brought me this year. And I wasn't shocked. I mean, I never seen so many rollerbladers. So many. Think about an escape park, but it's like a Woodward. Like a huge, huge place. Only rollerbladers. Wow. Man, you couldn't even skate the park. Like, it was crazy, crazy. I was so in shock that I was crying. Like, I was like, this is crazy. This is the exit. I was like, man, I want the world to see what I'm seeing now. Because people think rollerblading is dead. Rollerblade, there is not many rollerbladers. Like, there was so many skaters there that I don't even know. All these young kids doing crazy, crazy tricks. And we had all the legends there. I did a podcast. That's why I went there. And 
I was so sad that I didn't compete because I just did a demo. I was like, shit, I couldn't compete, you know, when I saw all the girls like start skating. And to see all the women there was just amazing. I mean, rollerblading is huge in Europe. It's huge, oh, yeah. huge. It's, it's huge in America too, but it's very underground because our industry is not as big as, you know, example, like a skateboarding. I always say skateboarding because they have a good like background that stayed, you know, and uh, we don't have that too much. That's why it's very underground. But in Europe, this event is like the X Games. It's crazy. Well, speaking of X Games, obviously there's none bigger when it comes to events. But I think for uh, a lot of our audience, especially people like myself, there was nothing bigger as far as movies and rollerblades. Blading. The greatest rollerblading movie of all time for me uh, is Brink. Kids growing oh, up watching God. Brink. <laughs> I know that was a fun job. That was yeah. You were um, so you were a stunt double for the for the girl the the girl for the girl. Right? The, yeah. yeah the the worst part because she had a really curly hair like a, a dark curly hair so I had to wear a wig and my helmet on top. And I was like, oh, my God, the helmet was, like, so up high, you know? But, um, man, I couldn't believe it that I was doing a movie, you know? That's those things that I say, I'm like, wow, rollerblading took me this far, you know, through it. Sports are very, it's very good to practice sports, you know? Because yeah. I think they can really transform, like, lives. That's what I think. It's brings like a uh, joy brings like a uh, faith to people like brings like only good things no matter what sport you do that's what i tell in my uh, speeches like i don't want to be only the fabiola the champion you know but i want to i want to change lives i want to mm -hmm. i want to help them achieve their goals and believe in their dreams you know that's everything that happened to me i want to pass that on so uh, that's so well said, Fabiola. I, I really, I appreciate that. And I'm, I, I, I can honestly say I'm inspired just, just talking to you. And oh, I'm sure thank you. I'm so well. happy for the opportunity, you know? I was oh, like, yeah, are you kidding? For sure. To be able to get a legend to talk? I mean, I know, it's, <laughs> I know it's a global pandemic, so you probably aren't as busy as you usually are, but we really do appreciate you making the time. And, yeah, uh, no, I, I appreciate I look it. Forward to, uh, I look forward to life getting back to normal and uh and hopefully we'll see you again soon at uh at for sure week. now you guys know where to find me so <laughs> <laughs> well fabiola thank you so much congratulations thank again you. to everything it. you've achieved in your career and uh we are so humbled that uh that you made some time for us thank you guys i appreciate it very much Thanks, made, uh, made me happy made my day today <laughs> thank you thank you guys